My name is Lena, and I want to thank you for joining me today on A Word of Encouragement. Now, today I want to uh, talk about where do evil thoughts come from? Now, this is a question that I had heard uh, someone ask, oh, probably about a couple of weeks ago. And uh, I've just been pondering it over in my mind, you know, and you would actually be surprised what the Word of God has to say about where evil thoughts actually come from. Now, I've always been taught that when we have evil thoughts or negative thoughts or bad thoughts, that those are thoughts that come from the enemy and that, you know, these are fiery darts, right? That the enemy is shooting at us. And so how we need to counter those fiery darts is we need to quench them with the word of God, amen, or we need to speak the word. So basically when you're having a negative thought, an evil thought or whatever, you want to speak the word of God. Or if you don't know any word, you know, Dell and I have taught that you just speak the opposite of whatever that negative thought is that's in your mind at that time. And now while that is true, Again, like I said, you would be surprised as to where evil thoughts actually come from. So let me go ahead and just share that scripture with you now. And it is out of Matthew chapter 15, verse 19. And I'm reading this from the New King James Version. It says, for out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witnesses, blasphemies. So here, the word of God is clearly saying that out of our hearts come these evil thoughts. So you may say, okay, hold on, wait a minute, Lena. So you're saying, you know, when I'm thinking these, you know, bad thoughts, you know, say against another person, you know, I'm thinking about harming somebody or I'm having these lustful thoughts or, you know, I'm thinking these negative thoughts, you know, that, that, you know, if I'm sick, that I'm going to die or something like that. You mean to tell me that the, that these negative thoughts, these evil thoughts are coming from my heart? Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying, because that's what the word of God is clearly saying again in Matthew chapter 15, verse 19. It says, for out of the heart proceed evil thoughts. The word is very clear on that. So now you may think, okay, wait a minute. You know, how is that possible? Proverbs 4, 23, it says, above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. Get that above all else guard your heart because everything you do flows from it all the thoughts that you think and those thoughts if you think on them long enough they become emotions and then those emotions if you think on them long enough you know then they will move you to action amen so this the word is saying here above all else guard your heart guard what you let in your eye gate what you let in your ear gate because whatever you're watching whatever you're watching on tv you know on youtube on Facebook, on TikTok, whatever the case may be, whatever you're seeing, you know, when you're just out and about the people that you're socializing with, whatever you're seeing, you know, whatever you're letting in your eye gate, whatever you're listening to, the type of music that you're listening to, you know, whatever types of teachings that you're listening to, whoever you're listening to on the radio or on the TV, whatever the case may be, you want to guard your eye gate and guard your ear gate because that's the way that things get in to your heart because they come in through your eye gate, they come in through your ear gate, and then they ponder around in your mind and you think about things that you've heard, think about things that you've seen, you meditate on those things for a while, and then they go from your head into your heart. And then once they get into your heart, then they come out your mouth. And once you speak those things out your mouth, you give power to them, you start exercising your authority. And before you know it, you're, you're speaking forth all these negative things and then you're seeing these negative things in your life. But even more importantly, getting back to your thought life before it ever comes out of your mouth, it's a thought. And so what the word is saying here, above all else, guard your heart. Because if you're guarding your eye gate and your ear gate, then you're not going to allow all those negative things to get in. You know, TV commercials that are telling you, oh, you know, if you have this symptom, you could have this sickness. All these TV shows, you know, that have fornication and adultery and all of these things that are against God's word, you know, in them, you know, all these, all this music, you know, in the world today, you know, and there's nothing wrong with watching TV, you know, or watching a movie, you know, Dell and I, we watch TV, we watch movies. There's nothing wrong with listening to music, but I'm just saying you have to really be selective of what you're you're feeding 
your mind, what you're allowing to come in again, your eye gate and your ear gate, because what's going to happen, what you focus on longest becomes strongest. So here's the thing. If you're always focusing on, you know, I don't know, say TV shows that, you know, have adultery in them or fornication, you know, or lying or cheating or, you know, something like that of that nature. If that's what you focus on and that's what you watch all the time, there, then it's no wonder that you may be dealing with lust issues, with issues of lust in your life. You know, if you're watching, you know, pornography, you know, and you're letting that in your eye gate and your ear gate, that's what's getting in your heart. And then, you know, you're walking around in lust, you know, things of these natures. You see what I'm saying? So think about this. The enemy can only have access to us to the degree that we allow it. Think about that. The enemy can only have access to us to the degree that we allow it. And how do we allow it? Through the things that we watch on TV, through the things that we listen to on the radio, through the, through the, the things that we partake in of this world. Let me share a couple of quick scriptures with you here. Uh, I'm going to read, let's see, I'm going to read, what is it? 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. Listen to this. It says, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of men, which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. The Amplified says, for the God of this world has blinded the unbelievers mind that they should not discern the truth, preventing them from seeing the illuminating light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, the Messiah, who is the image and likeness of God. So the reason I wanted to bring this scripture out here in 2 Corinthians 4, 4, it clearly says the God of this world. Who is it talking about? It's talking about Satan. There is a... Um, defiant spirit in the world if you will today it's always been present but it is so so prominent in society in the world today anything that goes against the bible everything is anti-christ it's anti-god you know and now i love everybody i don't have anything against anyone however you choose to live your life is fine we are under grace amen you know where sin does abound grace does much more abound understand that you know so that's i'm just you know throwing that out there but i'm just saying you know fornication adultery you know homosexuality lesbianism things of this nature and again i'm not speaking against anybody you know i have friends that are homosexuals amen i have friends that are lesbians i'm not saying anything about that how you choose to live your life is how you choose to live your life i still love you we can still be friends i'm still going to share the gospel with you we're good we can sit down and have dinner i'm just saying that spirit that is against Christ, when I say antichrist, anything that is against Bible principles. Okay, the word of God says that you should be married before you have sex. Huh, that's out the window. You know, the world teaches, no, you wanna have sex before marriage. You don't wanna marry somebody and you've never had sex with them before. You know, what if they're terrible in bed or something like that? You know, the world teaches just the opposite of that. Again, the Bible speaks against homosexuality and lesbianism, but the world today, they promote that. And if you say anything negative against that, then you know, you're spreading hate. And again, I just want to stress, I'm not spreading hate. I have friends that are lesbians, friends that are, that are homosexuals, and I love them dearly that I've grown up with ever since I was a child. That's not the point that I'm making. You know, and like I said, where sin does abound, grace does much more abound. So I'm not speaking against any of that i'm just saying you see that that spirit is so prevalent now in the world today you know the, the spirit of greed it's all about me what about me i'm the center of attention it's all about me and everybody thinks the world should you know revolve around them everyone is so selfish and so self-centered and so focused on me like you said it's just the spirit of the world today is just so antichrist it is so against god you know in every way and why is that it's because for the god of this world has blinded the minds of the unbeliever and the reason that the bible says that satan is the god of this world he's saying that satan is the ruler of this world of the air of the mindset of the spirit the predominant spirit that we see functioning in the world today not in believers 
Although it is present in believers because a lot of believers are worldly, you know, they're allowing themselves to be led by the world, to be dominated by the world. And so they are allowing themselves to be led by that worldly spirit to a certain degree. But let me go over here quickly. I want to share um, Ephesians 2, 2, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2 with you as well. It says, uh, and I'm reading this from the King James. It says, where in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. Again, it was saying in times past, speaking to believers, before you got born again, you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. Amen. That power, that presence in the air, in the world today, that presence, that power that is against God is saying, that's how you walked according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. And if you look at that in the Amplified, it says, following the prince of the power of the air, you were obedient to and under the control of the demon spirit that still constantly works in the sons of disobedience. Again, showing that it's, it's a demonic spirit that's just prevalent in the air in the world today. And like I said, anything that goes against Bible standards against Christian principles, it is promoted to the highest. They want to take, you know, prayer out of school. They want to take, you know, the Ten Commandments out of the courthouse. They, I even heard that they were, some people wanted to take in God we trust off of money. People want to take anything that has to do with God. Worldly people want to take anything that has to do with God out of the world today. We, they don't want anything that has anything to do with God or with Christ or with the word or with Christian values. They don't want to have anything to do with it. You know, and that is that spirit, that power, that demonic force that's working in the world today. And that's what we have to resist. So how does that come back to evil thoughts? Like that scripture there in Matthew was saying, out of the heart proceed the e these evil thoughts. And how do these evil thoughts get in? As that scripture in Proverbs was saying, you know, we have to guard our hearts. It com they come in, those evil thoughts, those things, the things of the world, the mindset of the world, you know, the, the thoughts of the world they come in through what we see on tv through what we listen to on the radio through what we allow ourselves to be exposed to daily we meditate on that we spend time with that we see that all the time and it gets into our heart and once it gets into our heart then out of that proceeds all these evil thoughts because we've saw all this negative stuff on TV. We've heard all this negative stuff on the radio. We've meditated on it. It's gotten into our heart. And so now those negative thoughts, those evil thoughts, they just pop up, they pop up, they pop up. So again, I say Satan only has access to us to the degree that we allow it, to the degree that we partake in the things of this world. That's why the Bible tells us that we should be in this world, but not of this world. Amen. Now, of course, we don't want to be hermits. We can't just live in a cave and never watch TV and never know what's going on and, you know, be up on current events or anything like that. That's not what I'm saying. But you have to be mindful. You just can't feed yourself. You can't feed your mind on the garbage of the world all day, every day, because when you do all of that junk gets into your heart, then from there, you're going to have all these evil thoughts. And like the word was saying, everything you do flows from your heart. Luke 6 34 tells us a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You know, Proverbs 4, 20 through 22, it says, My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Again, just showing the difference. 
a good man out of the good treasure of his heart is going to bring forth good things. So, and what are those good things? It, the word Proverbs tells us, give attention to my word, incline your ears to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Amen. So the way that we want to bring the way the Bible tells us we're going to be a good man or a good woman, a good human being. And out of the good treasure of our heart, bring forth good things is we have to give attention to the word of God. Amen. We have to incline our ears to the word of God. Now, that doesn't mean that you're going to walk around all day with your head in the Bible. You know, we know that's not possible. But what I'm saying, you want to let the word of God and your time that you spend in the word outweigh the time that you spend in the world in the things of the world. Amen. And I know we all have to work, you know, you work 40 hours a day and stuff like that, you know, but what I'm saying is when you, you know, and whatever you're exposed to at work is what you're exposed to. But like I said, when I'm at work, a lot of times I'll take a break. And when I take a break, I take a praise break. Amen. If I'm feeding my body and I'm, I'm on my lunch break and I'm eating food, you know, I'm listening to some word. I'm listening to, you know, uh, you know, praise and worship or whatever like that. You know, I'm listening to something encouraging. So I'm feeding, you know, my soul. The word of God is I'm feeding my physical body. Amen. So I'm being rejuvenated, renewed, refreshed physically as I eat food on my lunch break and, you know, mentally, spiritually, as I, you know, listen to the word while I'm on my lunch break, you know, you have to find little moments, you know, sometimes I'll step off away from work and I'll go in the bathroom and I'll just pray real quick. You know, sometimes I'll be at work. I'll be just at work doing whatever I'm doing. And under my breath, I'll be praying in tongues. You know, the beauty at my job, I have to wear a mask while I'm at work. So people can't see my mouth moving. So I'll just be going around working. And the whole time I'm praying under my tongue, under my breath, you know, just praying silently to myself, maybe speaking in tongues and nobody can even tell, you know? So, you know, the thing is you want your time that you spend with God, that you spend in the word, that you're inclining your ear to his saying, you want that to outweigh the time you spend with worldly TV shows, with worldly music, you know, with things of the world, because that spirit of the world is in all of those things. Amen. And we don't want, and we want to limit our access to that stuff because as we limit our access to those things we limit the enemy's access to us as well amen and again you know so out of your heart that's where all these evil thoughts come from so above all else guard your heart now the enemy he's still going to be out there throwing those fiery darts at you you know but again he only has access to you to the degree that you allow it. So if you're not listening to the negative reports, you know, from the doctor, not saying that you don't want to do what your doctor tells you. No, I mean, you want to, you know, pray about it and use discernment and you want to be wise. But what I'm saying, you know, you don't have to listen to the negative reports. You know, if the doctor tells you you only got six months to live, no, I'm sorry. The word of God says, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. I don't receive that. You know, now if you have some medication you want me to take or, you know, something you need me to do, I'm going to pray about it. If the Holy Spirit leads me to do it, I'm going to do that. Amen. But I don't receive all those other negative, you know, things that you're telling me about my sickness, about my disease, what about this sickness? Don't even, not my sickness, my disease. Er, cancel those words out about this particular sickness or disease that's attempting to attack my body right now. I'm not receiving that. Amen. You know what I'm saying? So like I said, I'm not saying don't take the medicine or don't do what doctors tell you to do. I'm just saying, don't just be so willing to just receive, you know, all the negative reports, all the negative stuff that's out there in the world. Don't feed your mind on junk. Y'all, I don't even watch the news. I may watch the news once a week, every once in a while, just to kind of keep myself up on current events and stuff like that. But I don't feed my mind. On, I don't feed myself on the news. You know, I go to work and people talk about stuff that's happening. So I hear in conversation, different things that are going on, but I don't feed, I don't feed myself the news. No, that's to me, that's a bunch of garbage. I don't, I don't watch it. Like I said, I just watch a very limited amount, just enough so I can stay current on what's going on and stuff like that. You know, and like TV shows, you have to be mindful, you know, of what you're watching on TV. Like I said, the word of God says, above all else, guard your heart. And the way that you guard your heart is through your eye gate and your ear gate, what you're watching and what you're hearing. Amen. So if you want to prevent those evil thoughts, 
from coming to you, stop putting all that junk in there and replace the junk that's in there with the word of God. Amen. And as you do, you'll find that your evil thoughts will be less and less. It'll be easier to overcome them. And again, like Dale and I've taught, like we always teach, like we've been taught when those evil thoughts come, you know, you cancel them out. You, how do you cancel a negative thought out? You, you, with words, you speak the word, you speak the word of God, or you speak the negative of whatever you're hearing. You cancel that negative thought out and you keep it pushing. And then you replace it with something good, with something positive with something encouraging with something in the word and you keep it moving and you'll find that you'll have victory because like this says a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good and you will see that as you begin to meditate on the word and the goodness of God and you uh, limit all the negative stuff in the world you'll begin to see that goodness manifests more and more and that negative decrease you know, more and more. And that's the goal. So guys, I hope that this uh, came out good. I hope that it's been uh, a source of encouragement for you, you know, but just be mindful, you know, if you're having a lot of evil thoughts, you know, what are you watching? What are you watching on TV? What are you listening to on the radio? What conversations are you having? What are you allowing people to speak into you, to speak over you? You know, take time to examine that because um, if it's not positive, if it's not good, if it's not, you know, word-based, you know, and, and everything doesn't have to be a scripture, but if somebody is speaking negative over you and they're always negative, never have nothing good to say, that's probably somebody you want to limit your, you know, exposure to. You don't want to spend a lot of time talking to that person listening to what they have to say and stuff like that. You may love them, but you might have to love them out here, you know, love them from a distance, amen? Because you don't want all that negativity coming to you. You know, you just don't, you don't need that in your life. You know, it's not going to prosper you in any way, amen? So guys, on that note, I'm going to go ahead and close for today. Uh, like I said, I hope this video has been a source of encouragement. If it has, please like, comment, share, subscribe. And as always, I just want to say thank you so much for watching. Please go to our website, manifestedvictory.com. You know, uh, again, thanks so much for watching and continued blessings.